It's DC 101. I'm Mike Jones. Wave high, boys. We got well, Judah in the line here up? in the studio. Judah, Brian, and Nate. What's going on with you gentlemen? Everything Mike good? Jones. What's up, man? We're doing great. <laughs> so, uh, excellent performance downstage on the Southwest Soundstage. Thank you guys for coming down and doing that for us uh, on your day off, too. So, we appreciate you boys swinging on through town. I know it's on, where are you going, Pennsylvania tomorrow? Yep, next show's in Allentown. Okay. We're going to stay close to there tonight. So it's on the way up then. Yeah. What yep. would you guys normally be doing on a day off, though? Like, would you be getting into some trouble today, playing video games on the, the, the bus or in the hotel room? We've really gotten into barcades lately. Yeah. Um, so Tell a little bit of, uh, we actually on our last tour, um, uh, we kind of stole it from our opening back called, um, the opening band called The Lonely Biscuits, and they love... Um, what was that? Was that pinball? Pinball. They love pinball. They like do all that stuff. And so, we ever since that tour, we had a blast doing that. So we always kind of find uh, cities and then try to find like barcades in the cities. And so just you go play, like, play will you games. write them down? Whatever towns you go to, and be like, we need to go back there next time. Oh yeah. Time. Oh yeah. Because I found a good one. I was in Denver last year. There's a good one called One Up near uh, Coors Field. So if you guys get back to Denver, I've, I've been there. I've you've been there. I'm from the Springs. Okay, just, that's so, right. Yeah. That's right. It's not that far away. Yeah. Yeah, that place is Good awesome, spot. dude. They and they sold um didn't they sell 40s there too? Mm -hmm. I think they sell Colt 45. <laughs> so any place that has pinball and Pac-Man and Colt 45. How can you not like that? That's a that's a good night. <laughs> all right, so guys, I mean, the song Take It All Back, it's blowing up. It's all over the place, you know. It's it's driving now the new force for Judah and the Lion. When you guys write that, it's been what, 3, 4 years now since you wrote that? Yes. Do you know when you do that are you like we have something really special on our hands here? Do you I mean, do you feel that once you're done that first demo and everything? Well, that that song in particular is kind of um, a funny story just like the way it was kind of cultivated. I mean, uh as a songwriter and songwriters, you you kind of probably spend too much time on some songs and then um, certain songs come rather quickly and um, that was one of those songs that just kind of came in about two or three minutes and we, really? were, we were done writing it um, just kind of like letting almost music be music and uh, we wrote it before our first ever headlining tour and I think for me when, when it really I, I felt like that it really kind of resonated was when we played it for fans live mm -hmm. um, the first time because um, obviously, they didn't know the song because it wasn't on any records of ours. But um, by the end, everybody's singing the chorus, and um, that was always kind of like a special feeling um, to have a new song. But people were actually singing the song by the end of it. Um, do you remember which? Uh, do you remember what venue it was? Where it was that you played that for the first time? Asheville, North Carolina. Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, so that place is always going to be special for you guys. It is. And then you know, I was just talking about this with uh, with our boss and some other people around here the <coughs> other day. When you do a song like Take It All Back, that's going to open up the doors, not just to play, you know, shows all around the world, but also to get your other songs recognized, too. It's like, all right, we need that first big hit, and then um, everyone's going to recognize, all right, this is the second one, this is the third one. So mm -hmm. that progression is going to come for sure. Right. So, um, Nate, why do, you, why do you let them make fun of your banjo so much, dude? <laughs> they were bagging on you on stage, yeah. man. It was, was brutal. That was tough. You know? My man's wearing the hat for the interview today. He's got the – can we get a close-up on the Jones hat, Josh? He's looking all style in there. <laughs> Just for you, my friend. No, thank you. I appreciate that. No, but they, but they were, they were bagging on you. Why do you let that happen? Uh, you know, it's – you have to pick your battles. I guess it's part of the game. <laughs> um, when uh, when I play Take It All Back right now, I call it Manjo Power. I don't want to say it's just, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's the banjo song. It's the mandolin. It's both coming together. So if you guys can make a Manjo t-shirt, really appreciate that. You know, I, I'm not asking for rights fees or anything. I just wanted to put that out Mike there. Jones and the Mandos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about what's going on right now. Um, 21 Pilots, you guys are out on tour with them. Um, shows are going great, I'm assuming, so far. Yeah, when we asked them to open up for us ha! on this tour, <laughs> yeah, we were um, really, really excited that they accepted. So. It's not, you know what, Josh and Tyler are good guys like that. They really are. <laughs> Dude, I, when, I, when I first heard about that, I thought it was awesome because I'm like, you know what? Most of those dates are already sold out, and that was before you guys were even announced. So all you got to do, go out there, kick some ass, and get everyone ready for 21 Pilots. That's like the greatest job in the world. How can, how can that not be anything but fun? Yeah, it's been it's been super amazing. They're just like the culture they have set up within the tour, the bands that are out there is just super welcoming. Um, obviously, their fans are super welcoming and just ready to have a good time. Um, they really want us to do our best, and like we don't have anything to lose. So it's been just super fun to get out there and win over the crowd and 
get them singing and dancing a little bit. Absolutely. And you guys doing like a half an hour before every set or so. Yeah. So that's like you walk out there and a lot of times when you go and you're you're the band that's starting out the night, it can be an empty place for a little while, but 21 Pilots, their fans are there ready to go. Mm-hmm. So are you guys walking out pretty much every night like, oh my God, look at this. This is amazing that we're a part of this tour. Yeah, it's actually really incredible. I mean, their their fans, um, at least the first night in Pro- uh, Providence, um, the night before we had rehearsals, and there was already like probably 200 fans camping out, like in a line. In January, uh, mm-hmm. in Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, it was night it's incredible. Um, so we've we've had um, amazing crowds for our set, and obviously that, that like like what you said, sometimes it doesn't really happen um, for bands that open up in, in bigger venues like that. So. Sure, it's everyone a, wants to get the beer, and you know, you get something to eat before you walk in, and everything. It's right. nothing against anyone that's playing; it's just you no, know, timing. Totally. Everyone's coming from work or whatever is going on. Right, right. And their their uh, their their show is just very very energetic, and that's what we try to bring to the shows too. So, in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm pretty kindred with them, and as far as that goes, and I feel like their their fans kind of see that too. So it's been it's been an amazing um, first first few shows. Absolutely, and those guys like Josh and Tyler are just super chill, super down to earth, but. Nobody really sees it backstage. They're putting in eight hours a day of hard work. Like, I think uh, I think it was Josh that, like, doesn't he bike for, like, three hours a day or something back there? And then he's on the drums constantly. So, you know, you see that kind of work ethic. It's got to step your game up, too, mm-hmm. for you guys, right? Right. You know. Yeah, uh, just the, the inten- like the intentionality uh, that they have um, with their personal lives, obviously. But even with their show, you can just kind of – see their every single moment of the show is um intentional and um so yeah and you know maybe one day we'll be good enough to have josh's pecs and hold on hold on josh's don't. abs you know? <laughs> um, don't so. say maybe you keep living the dream all right all you guys you just go there you bike for three hours a day you play the drums constantly right. yeah that dude is seriously too ripped for his own good i'm like what is going on here have they uh have you guys gone out on stage to play with them yet have because because every time I've seen them, they always bring all the bands up, and it's it's a jam session. It's that going on. What are you guys doing every night with them? Can, we could spoil yeah. it. We're we're doing a little mashup. Um, Chumbawamba. Oh <gasps> no! So that's that's the like that's like our cameo, and then we stay on stage for a few more songs with uh, John Bellion comes up as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's really all about the Chumbawamba. Yeah, it's all about oh Chumbawamba. My God, that yeah. is fantastic. See, now I wish we had the 21 Pilots, Jude and the Lion Tour here in DC. I, I feel like I'm missing out. You guys, you guys think I can go up to to Pennsylvania to Allentown? And you guys get me in? I just want to see the Chumbawamba part. Hop yes. in the van, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can broadcast um, from the van. Dude, that'd be awesome. We could just do the live show. Come on. So after 21 Pilots, then you guys get to go, uh, what is it, end of March? You're doing your own tour now? Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's what, the going to going to Mars tour? Yes, going to Mars. And then, and where is that going to be at? Uh, we have a, a Mars. Few, yeah, we're, we're heading straight <laughs> to Mars. Um, we had a few shows out this way, and then a lot of it's kind of up north in Canada and mm-hmm. the West Coast. Um, and then we're hoping to... Uh, do a lot more markets in the fall. Okay, okay. Um, so maybe we'll see. Maybe sometime later this year, you guys will be back through our area. Yeah, I think yes. we're we definitely would, planning on that. We would certainly like that. All right. So Judy, you told a story downstairs about your mom calling radio stations. Yeah. Does she? I mean, does she like the what is it? Na- the Nashville station down there. Yeah. So she calls all the time with fake voices and everything. Yeah. So um, that's hilarious. Th- this is a suggestion for all of you listeners as well. But um, what my mom does when she hears "Take It All Back," she calls um once and acts like she doesn't know you know who the band is and she says what's that song take it all back i really want to hear that song um and then she'll call again with a a different accent so um maybe you hear take it all back on the radio out there and um you like the song well give mike jones a call uh with like five or six different accents and um, that would really 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 help us out um what's the uh, what's the nashville area code that your mom's calling from so when i see it i won't just ignore her oh no she 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 knows that that doesn't uh that doesn't work she she only calls the nashville one okay she, she's not calling she can station. call up here she can call up here that's fine i'd put your mom right on the air with it that'd be fantastic 615 615 all right i'm gonna look for the 615 yeah well she's actually 931 but oh, she's nine three. Okay. She's nine three one. So okay. yeah. So if you see that, then uh, make make sure and get her on. Yeah, I'll, I'll put Mama Judah right on there. Yeah, That's awesome. no problem. And your parents have all been very supportive of everything going on. You were saying you were saying about empty <coughs> nesting and everything, but I mean, 
they see what has happened so far and they're all just like 100% behind you now? Now they are. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. So, so was there some conflict at first with it? I mean, were they like, what are our boys doing? What's going on here? No, in, in reality, our parents have been super supportive. Me and Nate uh, ended up dropping out of school to mm -hmm. pursue this. And, um, you know, they, I think our parents like just totally understood that we were going to do something different and we believed in this and um so we went for it and i think it's paid off now let's tell everyone though don't drop out of school to be a rock star okay stay <laughs> in school kids stay in school yeah, but stay in school, stay in school but if you're going to have a successful band then get the hell out of there that's fine <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to know anyone that you guys have met so far while you're out on tour, while you're doing anything like this, anyone that you've met that you've dropped your jaw about, have you been like, whoa, did that just really happen? Have you guys had any of those experiences yet? We we met Macklemore in Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, I was driving the van. Uh, a few of us are huge Macklemore fans in particular, but we were driving to Seattle, and of course that's his city. Mm -hmm. So we're pulling up to the venue, and I'm busting thrift shop. It's like super loud on the speakers. And Dylan, our guitar player, comes up and taps my shoulder. He's like, dude, there's Macklemore. I'm like, no way. Like, stop it, dude. Come I turn, on, I'm like, on. straight up Macklemore sitting at the coffee shop right next to the venue. <laughs> and so I, like, stopped dead there. Like, I'm just getting out. I got out of the van and walked up and said, hey. And He's a cool dude. He, I mean, he, I think he was just trying to kind of have his alone time. So he was really nice and welcoming and let sure. us take a picture. But uh, he was clearly kind of not anticipating anything like that so. what about you guys who have you met anyone that made you like go wow well? i think i think for me was uh david letterman um yeah because being on that show was um was amazing right before you retired but um i don't know you just kind of like grew up like listening or watching his um show and he's kind of like this figure that's always on the tv um especially as like a young kid and then um to be there and like to be able to shake his hand and um be on the show it's kind of you know Re reactive and was that was that performance like how long before he retired did you guys do the show it was like two months or something so it was like getting down to the wire <laughs> where he was hand picking everyone he hand picked you guys we like to think so I mean, <laughs> let's just go with that as the story right, yeah right. i mean yeah. Let's that's be... a pretty big honor for sure oh yeah what about anyone you've met uh you ever heard of mike jones i i mean <laughs> no seriously seriously no i don't know um are you just fame whatever <laughs> I don't know that I. I mean, Twenty One Pilots for sure has been really cool, just because we really admire their story. Mm -hmm. um, so if I if I had to, if you're gonna make me answer, Mike, <laughs> I'm not putting a gun <laughs> to your head. I'm just asking. I'm then, just asking uh, for an answer. Yeah, I, I would say Twenty One Pilots. Oh, you cool. have you guys? Has anyone uh, let you get in the hamster ball and jump around out in the crowd with it? Not yet. He made an offer. Saying if any of us were trying to get our leg work out for the day. That, that looks so tough to do. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to take him up on it and see if... You know what? When are you going to cool. get the chance to do that again? I, our tour. Sometime. Okay, all right. So <laughs> so when Dude in the Lion comes we'll back through. Some, someday. <laughs> we're no, going to get a big hamster ball. All right, I want to know, uh, last question before we talk about the new single, which you guys played downstairs. I do want to talk about that. Uh, give me your Super Bowl picks. Who do you like? Denver Broncos. Okay. All right. All right. You got two. You got two teams in there now. Come on. Stop being silly. Atlanta Falcons. All right. I'm gonna put you down for Falcons. Put me down for Falcons as well. Two Falcons. Falcons. All right. That's three Falcons. I don't, I don't think they're actually gonna win, but I don't want New England to win. Is this a Tom uh, Brady hatred? Yes. Yes. So for, you're for with me. I, it's a it's a Bronco thing. Right. right. I'm sorry. Oh, I get that. I get. For what? me, it's just because. Uh, be it Nashville is kind of closest to Atlanta. It's close enough. So I yeah. get that. All right, guys, tell me about the new single. Played it downstairs. <laughs> uh, you caught everyone's attention with that. It's like, whoa, we got a new song today. That's awesome. Mm. Give me the uh, give me the scoop on that. Well, it's uh, yeah, it was just kind of like written out of a place of. Um, I kind of briefly said it downstairs, but um, a place of kind of a, like an emotion, emotional like roller coaster of last year and. Um, with my grandpa dying, I was really close with, and then um, the birth of um, my new nephew. Um, so congratulations! Thank you on the yeah. nephew. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. I'm like definitely playing that proud uncle card right Absolutely now. Absolutely, didn't really you know should. that I ever would, but um, I don't know. It's just like there's something about like emotional things that happens in your life, whether it be death or new life or um, tragedy or new new hope and new beginnings um, that kind of just make you stop and think about your life and uh, what you're doing with it and um, 
so this is just kind of a song that um, was written just kind of thinking about what I would suggest to my nephew, um, almost like a, almost even like a letter to myself um, through his eyes. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Well, we're gonna we're definitely gonna be playing that after uh, after everyone is like, all right, we're ready for something new after take it all back. That's gonna be a while though, guys. Everyone's everyone's still loving the song, so we're gonna we're gonna get to that down the road. Um, we'll see you guys maybe later this year. I hope you're gonna come back through and grace yeah. us with your presence again. Be, be on the lookout for in the in the fall for sure. Okay, all right. So we're saying in the fall sometime down the road. Anything else you guys want to? Uh, we could talk video games if you want, but I know you guys got to leave. So next time, next time. All right, next time oh, we'll talk Zelda. Oh, no, we just want to say thanks so much for playing the song and uh, for the listeners that enjoy the station and um, are requesting the song or like the song. Thanks so much for your support. Uh, we love playing shows in DC. We have one of the rowdiest shows on our last tour, uh, our last headlining tour in DC. Um, so. Can't wait to see you, and uh, can't wait to be back here again um, with you. Well, I promise, next time you guys are around, we're going to have an even rowdier show, okay? Right. I, I will pass out Jaeger shots beforehand so everyone's <laughs> juiced and we ready. we got to bring the Colt 45 from that bar. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we can get a Colt 45 <coughs> Judah and the Lion show. We'll have to uh, let's see if we can get that sponsored. Guys, thank you so much <laughs> for the performance for the interview today. It was great. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank, thank you. you sir. All right, boys.